Hey guys, this is Toby Mathis. And uh, today we're gonna talk about bookkeeping for investors and specifically for infinity investing. One of the major principles of infinity investing is that we care significantly more about cash flow than we are worried about the growth of the company as a whole. Like we're gonna get both, but we don't base our investment strategy on just the increase like you would if you bought gold, for example. You're, you're with gold, you're hoping it goes up then it's worth more at some point in the future than what you bought it for. With infinity investing, we're adding a different element. We care about what you're generating off. It's like nothing gets generated off of gold, right? But a rental property is going to be kicking off rental payments or a dividend stock is going to be kicking off dividends or allowing us to generate uh, option income as well. So how does this look on a balance sheet? And this is where it gets really critical. I'm going to go ahead and share out my screen. So you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. You have to apologize to me. Looking around you there for a second. And so I'm going to just kind of lay it out. Uh, and you've seen this before. I oftentimes put up the, the income and expenses. And this would be called a P and L in most businesses, a profit and loss. As an individual, it's your income and expense, or it could be your expense. You know, however the the uh, the banks are going to call it, it's 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 basically how much do you make and how much do you spend. Uh, and then we compare that to down here. We have something called the balance sheet, and so we have assets and liabilities. And where traditional investing likes to sit, so traditional is down here. Here, I'll use a different color so you guys can actually read it. Traditional investors are here. And infinity investors, I'll put in red, I'll just say infinity, this is number two. And infinity, this is number one. Infinity, we care about the income that's coming in way more than just what it's worth. Because our intent, if, if, if you followed me, is that we don't really want to sell this. We just want to, we want to accumulate assets and let those assets generate income. And then we use those assets to pay for our expenses, we pay for our liabilities, and now the income is just going straight down here to buy more assets. So, you know, so how does this look in practicality? How does it look? So I'm just gonna kind of push this over to the side and I'm just gonna show you. So let's say that we buy a share of a company. So I'm just gonna call it ABC Inc. And we buy it at $10. And ABC Inc. every year pays out $1 in dividends. And we're able to sell options on it and generate another $1 in short term capital gains. And that's from selling options. So when you sell an option, that's what it's going to be. It, 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 again, we're doing short term. Sometimes you may do a leap and you may get into long term, but almost always it's going to be on this side at short term. And on the dividends, dividends, if it's U.S. companies, this is going to be treated as long term cap gains. With your head spinning, okay, we have different types of income sources here, right? That's all going right here. This guy right here, ABC Inc., actually lives down here on the asset side. So if I'm going to write this up and show you what it would look like on a on a balance sheet, you'd be carrying your shares, ABC Inc would be sitting on your on your asset sheet. What about our liabilities? Well, we're, we're not going to have any. We're not using any margin or anything like that. We're not getting crazy. We have no liabilities. What we have is whatever its value is. So this is equal to the value and then this is income received. Are there any expenses on this? Not really, because the way that uh, cap or the way that options work is at a just basis. 
So there's really no expenses in any of this. So you're not going to have to worry about expenses. You're not going to have to worry about liabilities, but we definitely have to worry about that PL and that balance sheet. You always do. Here's the thing. You always do, but people almost always ignore the, the, the P&L. Invariably, their planners don't even consider it. It's like it doesn't exist. They literally took out half the equation and threw it out. And that's why we're constantly pulling them up. But when you look at it from this standpoint, you could say, hey, if all you did was invest on that bottom half, you gave up half of the money. And that's exactly what happens to people is they're literally cutting their investments in half unintentionally because they're because they're forgetting about it. From a bookkeeping standpoint, it's actually quite simple. You look at it and you say, hey, in at certain points, we're really concerned about the income that's being generated on it. Like I really care about these numbers right here because I can spend this. I can buy more assets with it. A lot of you folks will do what's called a drip, which is a, a dividend reinvestment plan where you're taking your dividends and instead of receiving the money, it immediately goes into adding more shares. But we have that cash if we want it. We don't have to do that, by the way. We could actually just live off the dividends. We could live off the short-term gains. It comes into our, into our realm in the form of income. And it's sitting there for us to, to spend. And that's the part that always is so frustrating for me. I always look at it and going, that'd be like buying into a business and not caring about it paying you. Hey, I'll go start a pizza shop. Well, how much is it going to pay you? It's not. I hope the pizza shop is worth more in 10 years than what I set it up for. And that's, if, if that was you, you'd starve during that 10 years, right? You'd set up that pizza shop and you'd be like, all right, what are you supposed to do? Well, maybe you should get a job <laughs> while you run the pizza shop so you can make a living. And when people do that, they cause themselves so much pain. You have to look at these things and say, I need to have income. Uh, at some point, I'm gonna need the income off of this. Like if you wanna reach infinity, it's, it's, it's dividends. It's gonna be short-term capital gains. It's, it's going to be um, the, if you have royalty income, obviously, if you have interest income, obviously and you're in, in rents pops in there. But in this realm, I really care about those dividends and those short-term capital gains. If you, if you cut those out, you just threw away two of the five sources of passive income. That's what we want to be living off of. So why would you ever do that? And when you uh, fall for all these plays out there, they're doing the growth stocks. They're talking about how it's going to be the next hottest thing. They're focused from a bookkeeping standpoint just on the balance sheet. Now, what do you have to track? The good news is if you're an investor, you don't really have to track much. The, the brokerage house is going to track these things. You just have to know where it lands. So like on a tax return, I don't have to recognize unrealized gains. Like if I don't sell it, I don't have to, like if I buy ABC at $1 and it goes up to $100, I don't have a tax implication. Even if I buy ABC at $1 and it goes up to $100 and I borrow against it, I do what's called a security back line of credit and I take uh, the full hundred dollars out. You can't literally do that. They'll probably give you 70 bucks if it's a blue chip. Um, but let's just say I borrowed, I still don't have to pay tax on that. But there's portions of it that I do. The dividend is gonna be taxable and they're gonna give you a tax form every year, the 1099 uh, DIV. And you're gonna have the option income, the capital gains, which they'll report to you as well. Report it on a tax form. And that'll go on your schedule D. So you're going to have a little bit of both. And the dividend, I think, is going on B. So like you have different schedules on your on your individual tax return. And these things literally, you know, just takes it, pops it on there. It's actually really, really simple. But I want you guys to start thinking. And remember, there's four boxes, always four boxes. There's always income expenses and then assets and liabilities. And if they get you to look at just the assets and liabilities, and that's 99% uh, of them, that's what they do. Just want to flick them in the head and say, knock that off. That is only uh, half of it. And I would argue that it's the lesser half. The much more important thing is to have that income coming in because we can spend it. We can live off of it, pay rent with it, pay a mortgage with it. You could, uh, you, could you could pay the electric bill, you could buy food with it so you don't starve. All those things is because of the income coming in. And so don't ever forget that part. 
we look at all four. And if you blend your infinity investing and make sure that you're follow, if you follow it, you're going to see you're hitting all four. And it's going to be a fantastic feeling when you realize that your investment plan is geared. And even though we know there's four boxes, we care about the two. We care about those two. We care about that income. And we care about that, uh, the asset growth. And in, a, in that order, we care about that income number one. If you buy a stock and it pays you, let's say I paid a, I bought a stock for 10 bucks and it gave me $5 a year for the rest of eternity, you know, for infinity. It just kept paying it out, paying it out. But you, would you ever care whether it's still a $10 stock? No, I have $5 coming in every year for forever. I, I would love that. I would love that. Like, I don't care what it's worth. And that's why I always say is like, you, where you really should be focusing on is on that $5 a year. And if you build your plan around that, you will not be disappointed. Hope this helps. Thank you.